Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, let's simplify down solving quadratic equations. Throughout this video, I'll go through a bunch of different examples in pretty good detail so that you can see how to solve each of these equations from start to finish. All right, for this first example, let's try solving this equation where we have x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. Now the way I factor is I usually just write the factors for a down, so x times x gets us x squared, and then I go ahead and write the factors for the c term, which is going to be negative 5 and positive 1. I'm choosing uh, negative 5 and positive 1 because I want a negative 4 in the middle if possible. If we multiply these across here, that's going to be negative 5x. Multiply across here, that's positive 1x, and those do combine to make negative 4x. So this method's really nice because we can factor right away. So going ahead and setting these binomials up, we know we're going to have x and x as our first terms, and then we're going to have minus 5 along the outers, and then plus 1 along the inners. Okay, and if we go ahead and set these equal to 0, we can say that if this is equal to 0, then x would have to equal negative 1. And if we set this equal to 0, we could say that x has to equal positive 5. Okay, those would be the two solutions for this quadratic equation. Here's another example. Let's try solving this equation where we have x squared plus 8x plus 19 is equal to 0. So right away I'm looking at this and I don't think we can factor it just because 19 is a prime number and no factors of 19 will add up to get 8. So I'm going to go right into using the quadratic formula here in this particular case. Okay, that's a pretty common strategy. So a is 1 here. Again, that's the coefficient that's in front. We know b is going to be positive 8 and then we know c is going to equal positive 19. Plugging in these values into the quadratic formula, we have x equals the opposite of b, or negative 8, plus or minus the square root of, and let's do b squared, that's going to be 8 squared, minus 4ac, so that's minus 4 times 1 times 19, and that whole thing is going to be over 2a, so that's going to be 2 times 1, or just 2. Simplifying this a bit, we have this negative 8 plus or minus the square root of, let's see, 8 times 8 is 64, minus 4 times 1, which is 4, times 19 is 76. So we have 64 minus 76, and that's going to be all over 2. Uh, let's see. Uh, we can simplify the radical here. So negative 8 plus or minus 64 minus 76. I think that's going to be negative 12, right? So the square root of negative 12. And since this value is negative, this is called the discriminant, um, then we know we're going to have no real solutions here. So just keep that in mind, okay? And this whole thing is going to be over 2. Okay. Uh, the next thing is we're going to go ahead and see if we can break up this radical a little bit. Breaking down this radical here of the square root of negative 12, we can say that's going to be the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 3. And so the square root of 4 is just going to be 2. The square root of negative 1 is going to be i. So that's going to be uh, 2i root 3. And that's going to be all over 2. And then going ahead and writing our final solutions here, we can really say, dividing everything by 2, that we have x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus i root 3. And those would be their two solutions for this quadratic equation. They're both complex or imaginary. Let's try another one here. So uh, for a third example, let's try saying we have 8x squared. Let's do minus 8x and add 2 and say that's equal to 0. Well, not every equation can do this. In this particular equation, notice how all the terms have a common factor of 2, or their GCF is equal to 2. If you ever see that, you can go ahead and divide both sides by the GCF for an equation, and that way the values actually simplify down a little bit here. So a half of 8x squared is going to be 4x squared, and then half of negative 8x is minus 4x, and half of 2 is going to be plus 1, and half of 0 is still going to be 0. So um, you know, this doesn't really help solve the problem completely, but it does help us get started. Okay, um, I don't think this one is necessarily going to be factorable. Actually, no, maybe it is factorable. Let's see here. Um, I'm thinking here that if we just look at the factors here, let's do 2x and 2x. Maybe it is factorable, right? And we have a minus 4x in the middle. So I'm thinking about using maybe a minus 1 and a minus 1. This actually looks pretty good. If I multiply these across, that's going to be negative 2x. And I multiply across, that's going to be negative 2x. Combine those, that's actually going to be negative 4x. So Here's what these uh, binomials will look like. We have a 2x minus 1, and we'll have another 2x minus 1. I know I can do this because they're the same, and that's going to be equal to 0. Okay, so 
Again, this one happened to be factorable. And if you want to check this using the quadratic formula, go ahead. Uh, that's uh, that this should still work out. Okay. If you set this equal to zero, okay, uh, you would add one to both sides and divide by two. So x would equal positive one half. And if you set this one equal to zero, the same thing would happen because they're identical. It's a perfect square trinomial. And that would also equal x equals one half. So that's gonna be the solution, x equals one half. There's only one solution for this particular one, right? The multiplicity is two, or the parabola just comes down and touches the x-axis at x equals one half. Let's try another one. So that was three. Let's go ahead and try number four now. So for number four, let's try one where we can't factor it again. So we get used to that a little bit more. So let's try this quadratic equation. We have four X squared minus eight X plus one is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, I know this one's not factorable just because there's no combination of four and one that can get us to negative eight, even if we broke it into two and two. So straight into the quadratic formula here, let's say a is equal to four. Uh, we know b is equal to negative eight, and we know c is equal to positive one. Okay, so let's go ahead and use those values. So we have x equals the opposite of b. The opposite of negative eight is gonna be a positive eight plus or minus the square root of, let's see what we have here, b squared, that's gonna be negative a squared, uh, minus four ac, so minus four times a, which is four, times c, which is one. This whole thing is gonna be all over two a, or two times four, and I'm just gonna write eight. So hopefully I didn't skip too many steps there and you were able to follow along. And if we simplify this down a little bit, we have eight plus or minus square root of, this should be 64, negative eight squared, and minus uh, 16. This whole thing is gonna be over eight. All right, simplifying this down a bit more, we have this eight plus or minus 64 minus 16, I think that's 48, and that's gonna be over eight here. Let's see if we can break down this radical here of root 48, so uh, what is that equal to? Um, hmm, I think we have a 16 in there and a three, right? 16 times three is 48 and 16 is a perfect square. So if we go ahead and break it just like that, we have eight plus or minus, square root of 16 is four, so it's gonna be four root three over eight. And at this point, we can go ahead and divide everything by the GCF of four, and we'll get two plus or minus uh, root three over two. Those would be the two irrational solutions, but real solutions for this quadratic equation. Let's keep on practicing some more here. And if you're getting the hang of this a little more, that's wonderful. Uh, I really encourage you to maybe try pausing the video and trying some on your own. Uh, but if not, that's okay. We can keep doing them together. That's why I'm here. And uh, feel free to pause the video whenever you need to think a little bit more or just want to try anything on your own. But otherwise, let's do them together, okay? Um, looking at this, I don't think we can factor. Uh, so let's practice using the quadratic formula here again. I don't think I really want to use any other methods right now. Uh, a equals three here, B equals negative eight, and C equals negative nine, okay? Don't forget those negatives. And let's go plug this into the quadratic formula. So we have X equals the opposite of B. So opposite of negative eight is gonna be positive eight, plus or minus the square root of, and what do we have? B squared, that's gonna be negative eight squared minus four times A, which is three, times C, which is negative nine. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this a little longer. And this whole thing is gonna be all over two A. Since A is three, two times three is equal to six. All right, let's go on to the next step and simplify this down a little bit. And so what do we have here? Uh, eight squared is gonna be 64, negative eight squared is positive 64. And then what do we have? We have negative four times three is negative 12, negative 12 times negative nine should be plus 108. And this whole thing is gonna be over six. Let's see what we have inside here. Um, 64 plus 108, I think is gonna be 172. So we have the square root of 172. I wonder if that can be simplified a bit here. Let's see. Um, this one's a bigger number, so I'm not sure exactly what values in my head we could do. So I'm gonna take 172. I'm gonna break that into, I think 80, 85, 86 and two. I think that makes sense. 86 times two is 172, 160, 172. Okay. And then I think this is gonna be 43 times two. 
and then 43 is prime here. So uh, 43 times two times two is equal to 172. So we should be able to break this up and say, okay, uh, two times two makes four and then 43 can't be broken up. So that's gonna stay inside. So, um, so it's, we can be simplified a little bit, but not a whole lot. So we have eight plus or minus the square root of four is two. So it's two root 43 over six. So now that we have simplified it as far as we've gone, I think we can do one more thing and divide everything by two. That seems to be the GCF, okay? And we have four plus or minus root 43 all over three. I think that would be our two solutions. They'd be irrational in this case as well, but they're real. Let's try another one here. Um, so that was the fifth one. Let's try a sixth example here. So for number six, let's give this a go where we have three uh, X squared minus 12 X and let's set that equal to negative 12. So this is the first one where we have something on the other side of the equation. So actually before I even want to do anything, I think I'm going to want to divide everything by three. I don't know if you noticed that uh, three is a common factor, but I like to make all the numbers smaller if I can. And so dividing everything by three, we'll have X squared and then minus four X is equal to negative four. Okay, so again, that's kind of the first thing I'd want to do there. The second thing I want to do is I'd like to move everything to the same side of the equation so it's set to equal to zero. Again, that's going to make it easier to solve these quadratic equations. We'd like everything to be on the same side. So we'll have x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to zero. At this point, I'm noticing a special pattern here. So we want to know our special uh, quadratic patterns if possible. And what I'm noticing here is that you have this x and x that gets you x squared. And if we choose to put a negative two and a negative two, those do multiply to get positive four. And so if you multiply these across, that's negative two X, that's also negative two X, and those combine to make negative four X. So we're actually gonna get two identical binomials of X minus two and X minus two, and that's gonna be equal to zero. And so if we solve this, it's gonna be the same for both cases. So what makes this equal to zero? We can say X equals two. And that's gonna be the same for this one. So we can just write our final answer as X equals two. There's only one solution here. Let's try another one where we don't have everything on the same side of the equation. So for number seven, let's give this a go where we have X squared. And let's set that equal to negative 14. And then let's do minus three X. Okay, so right from the beginning, I don't think I can divide anything uh, like a GCF or anything like that. So let's go into moving everything to the same side. Um, I guess we could move the two things on the right to the left or just move the thing on the left to the right. Um, so uh, I don't know. Let's go ahead and just like add 3x to both sides here. Uh, and also, I guess let's add 14 while we're at it to both sides. So we'll add 14 and we'll also add 3x to both sides of this equation. So going ahead and doing that, we should end up with x squared plus 3x, then plus 14 is equal to zero. Now, in this case, I can't think of anything that multiplies to 14 that adds to get to three. It's not gonna work here, so our, our uh, answers here, are we're gonna have to use a quadratic formula instead. I'm not gonna use completing the square here because b is odd, that's not really fun to do. So let's see here, uh, we have a leading coefficient of one, so a is equal to one. We know b is equal to positive three, and we know c is equal to positive 14. So substituting this into the quadratic formula, let's say x is equal to negative b, so that's gonna be negative three, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's gonna be three squared minus four ac, so minus four times one times 14. And that's gonna be all over two a, so two times one, that's just gonna be two. Uh, we have negative three plus or minus the square root of three squared is gonna be nine. And then negative four times one is negative four times 14. That should be minus 56, I believe, okay? This whole thing is gonna be over two. We can simplify just a little bit more here. I think we're gonna have negative three plus or minus the square root of negative, what is that, 47, I think, negative 47 and that's all over two right now, okay? So let's see. Um, I don't think 47 has any perfect squares hidden inside of it. I do think I'm gonna need a little bit more space here. So uh, we can pull out the square root of negative one, which is going to be i. So we can say x equals negative three plus or minus 
Uh, we have I root 47. That's stuck inside, and that's all over two. I think that would be our final solution here. Let's keep on practicing together here, right? So no pressure, just you and me kind of doing some uh, extra practice problems together, seeing how we're doing. And so number eight, let's do three minus eight X, and then let's say minus five X squared, and let's set that equal to five X, okay? So we have an equation here, and it looks like maybe we have some like terms we can get here going on. So uh, I'm gonna make everything equal to zero, so minus two X to both sides of the equation. And when we go ahead and do that, we'll have three minus 10 X minus five X squared is equal to zero. I like to maybe rewrite this so it's in standard form. So I'll put the negative five X squared first and then minus 10 X, then plus three is equal to zero. So everything's kind of in order from least to greatest. And what I'd like to do next, I guess, is I'd like to take both sides of this equation and let's just take everything and on both sides, let's go ahead and just divide by negative one or multiply by negative one, either way is fine. But that way we flip all the signs. So this becomes positive, this becomes positive. This is negative, but then this stays as zero. So a little bit nicer just because now we have less negative numbers and A is positive, okay? Um, I don't think this one's gonna be factorable. So we're gonna go into using the quadratic formula here. So. Let's see what values we need. We need to know that A is equal to five. We need to know B is equal to 10 and that C is equal to negative three. Okay, I'll go ahead and plug this into the quadratic formula. Then uh, we'll get some more space to the left in a moment. So uh, X equals opposite of B. We'll put negative 10 plus or minus the square root of, let's see what we got here. B squared, that's gonna be 10 squared minus four AC, so four times five times negative three. That's all over two A, and we know A is equal to five, so two times five is equal to 10. I think I have a little bit more space under here. Let's keep going. Negative 10 plus or minus the square root of, let's see, we have 100, and then we have, oh, I'll just write it out. We have 100, uh, negative four times five is negative 20, negative 20 plus three is gonna uh, negative 20 times th negative three is gonna equal positive 60. So I'll write plus 60 here. Again, this whole thing is gonna be over 10. All right, let's see if we can kind of continue this over to the left here, get some more space. Um, I'll also just kind of take this last step and bring it up here so it's maybe more clear what's going on. So continuing this, we have this negative 10 plus or minus uh, the square root of 160. And that's all over 10. And maybe we can simplify down this radical a bit. So root 160, hmm. Let me go ahead and make a tree so you can kind of see the process for that. So I know we can do 16 times 10. Um, actually, I think we could maybe stop there just because 16 is a perfect square, right? So let's break that into 16 and 10. All right, we like perfect squares, that's a goal there. And so we can simplify this down and say this is negative 10 plus or minus, the square root of 16 is gonna be four. So it's gonna be four root 10, and it's all over positive 10. At this point, we can go ahead and divide everything by two because I think that's gonna be the GCF. So half of negative 10 is negative five, plus or minus two root 10 all over five. Those would be our two solutions for this quadratic equation for number eight. Alrighty, let's keep on practicing a bit here for number nine. Might need to start using the whole page here. I don't wanna squeeze and make it too messy. Let's try something like this, where we have the equation four X squared plus three, and let's set that equal to X squared minus seven X. Okay, so uh, if you wanna pause it and give it a go on your own, great. If not, let's do it, okay? I'm gonna move everything to the same side of the equation. I'm gonna take away x squared. I'm gonna take away one x squared from both sides. I know you can't see that coefficient. Sometimes it confuses people. Um, so four minus one is gonna be three x squared plus three is equal to a negative seven x. And then let's go ahead and add seven x to both sides of the equation. So plus seven x and plus seven x and if we go ahead and add that to both sides, we should then have three X squared uh, plus seven X, keeping this in standard form, and then plus three and say that's equal to zero. 
Is this one factorable? I don't think so. So let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula. Say a is equal to three, say b is equal to seven, and say c is equal to three. We'll find out very shortly uh, if this was factorable or not, depending on if we get a perfect square in the uh, discriminant or in the square root. So x equals opposite of b, negative seven, plus or minus the square root of Let's go with b squared, that's gonna be seven, positive seven squared, minus four times a times c, something like that. And it's gonna be all over two a. So two times three is gonna equal six, okay? Um, I'm not gonna squeeze this any more in here than I have to, so I'll rewrite this x equals, and we have negative seven plus or minus the square root of seven squared is gonna be 49, and then four times three is 12 times three is 36. So we're taking away 36 here, okay? This whole thing's all over 2a, which is six. Subtracting 49 minus 36, we should have negative seven plus or minus the square root of 13 over six. Because we have that 13 in the radical, which is not a perfect square, it meant that we were gonna have two irrational solutions. So we have negative seven plus root 13 over six and negative seven minus root 13 over six. But those are gonna be our two solutions here that are irrational. Let's try some more. And hopefully this is getting a little better as you go, slowly but surely, okay. Um, number 10, let's try doing four plus, let's do nine X minus three x squared, and let's set that equal to two minus x. So to start solving this problem, I'm gonna move everything to the same side of the equation, and I'm hopefully gonna not confuse you and do two steps at once. So I'm gonna add x to both sides and take away two from both sides of this equation. Going ahead and doing that, let's see how that simplifies down this equation a little bit. So four minus two is gonna equal two. Nine x plus x is gonna be plus 10 x we have minus three x squared, and now it's equal to zero on the other side, okay? Rearranging this a bit in standard form, we have negative three x squared, then plus 10 x, then plus two is equal to zero. If we then go ahead and take everything and let's uh, multiply everything by a negative one. I know earlier I multiplied or divided by negative one. Um, this is just gonna flip all the signs. So we're gonna get positive three x squared minus 10 x, minus two is equal to zero, just like having a positive a value, okay? Um, I don't think this one can be factorable either, so we should go ahead and use the quadratic formula, especially because our a value isn't so nice here, a equals three, uh, b equals negative 10, and c equals negative two, all right? Plugging this into the quadratic formula, we have x equals the opposite of b, so negative negative 10 is positive 10, plus or minus the square root of, let's do b squared, that's gonna be negative 10 squared, minus four times a, which is three, times c, which is negative two, and this whole thing is gonna be over two a. And two times three is gonna be equal to six. Okay, so continuing this up to the right, let's see, we have x equals 10, plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared is 100. And then I think we're gonna end up adding something here. So negative four times three is negative 12. Negative 12 times negative two is positive 24. So that makes sense. We're adding there because of the two negatives. And this is all over six, okay? Um, what do we have? We have 10 plus or minus the square root of 124 over six. And we now need to uh, look at this 124 and see what we have inside of it. Any perfect squares? Uh, I'm not sure, so I think we can take this 124 and maybe break it down. Um, I guess we can do two times 62, and 62 is two times 31. So I think we found uh, a perfect square here of at least four, right? Two and two make four. 31's a prime number, so it can't be broken up anymore. So. Uh, we can break this into root four times root 31. And so we can say 10 plus or minus, the square root of four is two, so two root 31 over six. Okay, so one final thing to do, I think we can divide everything by two, that's the GCF here. So we can say X equals uh, five plus or minus 
the square root of 31 over 3. That should be our two final solutions here that are both irrational, but they are real. All right, so now that we've done 10 examples together, I'm gonna to go ahead and solve these next few questions or examples uh, two different ways. So you can hopefully see a pattern or something kind of make a connection to help you solve some of these problems. So let's try looking at this problem. We have x squared, let's do minus five x plus 10, and let's set that equal to positive four. Okay, so I'm gonna solve this using the quadratic formula first, and then I'll solve it using uh, factoring so you can see a similarity for these specific types of examples that you may encounter, okay? Something that's really good to know for the future in case you see different types like this, okay? So I'm gonna make this equal to zero first, and to do that, I'm subtracting four from both sides, so we really have x squared minus five x, and then plus six is equal to zero. All right, so I'm tempted to just factor this right now because I know it's factorable, but let's pretend we didn't know that, all right? And we're gonna use the quadratic formula. So let's say A is equal to positive one. There's a one here. We know B is equal to negative five, and we know C is equal to positive six, right? So using the quadratic formula, we'll say X is equal to opposite of B. That's gonna be a positive five plus or minus the square root of, let's see, we have B squared. That's gonna be negative five squared uh, minus four AC minus four times one times six. And that's gonna be all over two A, so it's gonna be two times one, which is two. All right, so we have five plus or minus the square root of negative five squared, which is positive 25. And then we're gonna take away four times one times six, which is 24, put that all over two. Simplifying a bit more, we have five plus or minus the square root of one all over two. And notice right now that we really do have a perfect square that's inside of here, right? This square root of positive one, that's a perfect square, and so something unique will happen each and every single time. So uh, what we're gonna have next is, let's see, I'll continue this up here and say, x is equal to five plus or minus one over two. And so from that, we can go ahead and say, okay, we know x is equal to five plus one over two, and that's gonna equal positive three. And we also know that it's five minus one over two, so x would equal positive two. Okay, so again, this is solving this quadratic equation using the quadratic formula, but let's go ahead and say uh, that we know we can factor this because of that perfect square that we had down there, okay? So, um, oh, actually, let me go ahead and actually uh, turn this into this one here we know we moved it over. So let's just use this form of this equation instead. And if we look for two factors for x squared, like x and x, those multiply to get x squared. And for positive six, I think we can do a negative three times a negative two because those multiply to get uh, positive six, but add to get negative five. So this would equal negative three x, this would equal negative two x if you multiplied. So this works. So again, we get a perfect square in the discriminant or in that perfect square for the radical. We can then factor this into two binomials. So x minus three, x minus two is equal to zero. So what makes this binomial go to zero? That's if x is equal to positive three. And what makes this equal zero? That's if x is equal to positive two. So keep a lookout for perfect squares inside here. It's called the discriminant. Uh, so if you get a perfect square, all right, perfect square here, um, that lets you know that you could have factored it instead, right? Because sometimes people wonder, well, like, how do you know when you can or cannot factor it? And it depends on what kind of value you get inside here. Okay, so there's number 11, and we solved it two ways, getting the same solutions either way. All right, so let's try another one where we kind of explore that a little bit more and see if we can see the same pattern uh, again. All right, so let's try for number 12 here. Let's do x squared uh, minus x minus three uh, is equal to x. Okay, so here we have one. If you'd like to try it on your own, go for it. I'm gonna solve it two ways again here. So I'd like to make this equal zero, so I'll subtract x from both sides of the equation. Going ahead and doing that, we get x squared minus two x minus three is equal to zero. Okay, so again, this one is gonna be factorable again, but I'll show you what's gonna happen here. So uh, we have a is equal to positive one. We know b is equal to negative two and c is equal to negative three. All right, so let's go ahead and plug some stuff in and see what happens. So x equals the opposite of b. That's gonna be two plus or minus the square root of 
b squared, that's going to be negative 2 squared minus 4 times a times c, which is negative 3, all over, and it's going to be 2a, or 2 times 1, okay? Uh, if we go ahead and simplify down the radical a bit, the inside negative 2 squared is going to be positive 4, and negative 4 times positive 1 is negative 4, times negative 3 is going to be positive 12, or plus 12. It's going to be all over 2, and we have 2 plus or minus inside here, we just get 16, and this will be over 2. So what did I say earlier? This, this uh, perfect square of 16 lets us know that uh, we're going to have uh, you know, two rational solutions, or we could have factored here. Okay, so continuing this, we could say x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 16, which is 4, all over 2. And we now know 2 plus 4 is 6 divided by 2, so we can say x is equal to positive 3. And then 2 minus 4 is going to be negative, negative 2 divided by 2, and so we can say x equals negative 1. So those are our two solutions for this problem or this quadratic equation. And maybe we can try seeing if we can factor. So um, I'll go ahead and just grab this where we already set it equal to 0. Okay. And let's see if we can factor this. So the factors of x squared are going to be x and x. The factors of negative 3 that add to get to negative 2 are going to be negative 3 and positive 1. If we multiply across or diagonal, it doesn't matter. That's negative 3x, that's positive 1x. That does add to get negative 2x. So let's write these binomials out. We'll get x minus 3 for one of them and x plus 1. It doesn't matter uh, how we order it just because they both multiply to get 0. And so when will they equal 0? Well, in this case, it's when x is equal to positive 3. And in this case, it's when x is equal to negative 1. Okay, so again, keep in mind that uh, when we get that discriminant or a radical to be a perfect square, we could have factored also. So now that we've done two of these, hopefully it feels a little bit more comfortable. Let's try another one. So number 13, what do we got here? Let's try solving this one where we have 3x squared. Um, we'll add 7x to this, and let's do minus 24, oops, minus 24, and let's set this whole thing equal to 13x. All right, so we'll give it a go together if you'd like. Uh, let's do minus 13x, let's set everything equal to 0, so minus 13x on both sides. Go ahead and do that, let's see. We'll have 3x squared, we'll do minus 6x minus 24 is equal to zero. Now, before you jump right into using the quadratic formula here, um, I'm gonna try to remind you that if we see a GCF, we can maybe divide everything by that. It might help us out a little bit. Maybe you see it, maybe you see it. I'm thinking here that we can divide everything by three, so like, why not? Um, why not just make all the numbers smaller if it's gonna get us the same answer? So we'll have x squared minus two x minus eight is equal to zero. So plugging these values into the quadratic formula are going to be much nicer uh, than using 3, 6, and 24. So we have a is equal to 1. We know b is equal to negative 2, and c is equal to negative 8. So plugging this into the quadratic formula, we have x equals opposite of b, which is negative negative 2, or positive 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared. That's going to be negative 2 squared minus 4ac minus 4 times 1 times negative 8. And this is going to be all over 2a. 2 times 1 is just going to be 2. So simplifying this down a bit, we have 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared is 4. And then negative 4 times 1 times negative 8 is going to be plus 32, or positive 32. And this whole thing is going to be over 2. All right, so continuing this up here, we have this 2 plus or minus, I think 4 plus 32 is going to be 36. And this is going to be all over 2. And again, just to kind of remind you, seeing this pattern here, why we're, we're able to do these two ways here, um, you, you know, pretty nicely, is this is a perfect square. So that scenario pops up where we have 2 plus or minus and the square root of 36 is 6. This is over 2. And so what can we say here? 2 plus 6 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. So that's going to be one of our solutions. And then 2 minus 6 is negative 4 divided by 2. x equals negative 2. That would be our second solution here. Okay. 
Now, since we have two nice rational solutions here, that means we could have factored this instead. So again, factoring this, how would we have gone ahead and done this? Well, I would have divided everything by three also to factor. That also works nicely. So we would get this equation right over here. And ter in terms of looking for those factors, I know x times x is x squared. And for negative eight, I'm thinking of a negative four and a positive two. Those do multiply to get negative eight. But if you multiply these, you get negative four x and you get positive two x and they do combine to get the negative two x in the middle. Okay, so our two binomials here would be x minus four and then x plus two and that equals zero. So what multiplies to get zero? You need a zero. So here um, x equals positive four would be one of them. And then for this binomial, if x was negative two, it would become zero and those would be our two solutions. All right, so now let's try another one of these. Again, practice uh, should help you feel a little better. So 14, um, let's see, let's do 5x squared uh, plus 40x, plus 40x, let's do plus 100 and set that equal to 25. All right. Um, Okay, how do we want to get started here? I think what I want to do is just maybe divide everything by five from the beginning. So I notice that's a GCF here. So divide this side by five, divide this side by five. If we do so, we would get X squared plus eight X, then plus 20, and that's equal to five. So these are definitely nicer numbers to use. And then I'm gonna make everything equal zero. So I'm gonna move this five to the left side, subtract five on both sides. So we'll have x squared plus 8x and then plus 15 and set that equal to zero. All right, so let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula here first because that always will help us out a little bit as one method and we should be getting more used to it. So a equals one, we know b is equal to eight and we know c is equal to 15. So substituting that in or those values in, we get x equals the opposite of b, so it's negative eight plus or minus the square root of, let's see, b squared, that's gonna be eight squared minus four ac, so minus four times one times 15. That's gonna be all over two a. So that's gonna be all over two times one, which is just equal to two. I think we can simplify this down a little bit here. So negative eight plus or minus the square root of, well, let's see, eight squared is gonna be 64. And then four times one times 15 is gonna be 60. So we're gonna take away 60 and put that all over two. All right, uh, continuing that up here, we can say we have X equals the opposite of eight uh, plus or minus here. Um, this should just be a four now. And this is all over two. Notice here how we have a perfect square. So this is indeed factorable. So we have negative eight plus or minus two all over two. And I think we can say negative eight plus two is negative six, negative six divided by two, say x equals negative three. And then negative eight minus two is negative 10, negative 10 divided by two, x equals negative five. All right, so those are our two solutions here. Let's go to maybe factoring. So I'm gonna take this version of the original equation. This is the most simplified version to use here and the easiest one. So seeing how we can factor this, obviously we know it's gonna be factorable because we got a perfect square and we got nice values there. So I'm gonna choose all positive things, positive uh, terms, just because we have all positives in the trinomial. So that makes eight X in the middle and 15 at the end. Our two binomials here I'm thinking are X plus five and then X plus three. If you're ever not sure, go ahead and foil it to check, but that should work out. What makes this go to zero? That's if X equals negative five. And what makes this go to zero, that's if x is equal to negative three. Voila, those are our two uh, solutions again, all right? All right, so now that we've done a bunch of practice problems together all the way through, what I'm gonna do next is let's give some uh, equations and let's just practice using discriminant to determine what types of solutions that we have. Let's not actually solve it, but let's just identify what we kind of are working with here. All right, so uh, for this first one, let's try the equation x squared um, minus 8x plus 16 is equal to zero. So you may already know, but let's pretend we don't. And let's just worry about the discriminant right now. So for the discriminant, all we need to know are ABCs, right? So we have this here. So 
a is going to be 1, we know b is going to be negative 8, and we know c is going to equal positive 16. So let's go right into discriminant. I'm going to make that in purple, so to help you remember this right here, that's b squared minus 4ac. This is kind of like the most important thing of the quadratic formula to know because it controls a lot of what's going on here. Okay, so let's go ahead and substitute some values in. If we know what's going on with this, we'll help know what kind of solutions we have. So we have negative eight, and we're gonna square that, minus four times one times 16. I feel like I never write these long enough. And so if we substitute, not substitute, if we simplify a little bit, uh, negative eight squared is gonna be 64. And then we have four times one times 16. Oh my gosh, that's also 64. So let's see, we get an answer of zero here. And so the fact that we have as, uh, this value, this discriminant here, this number right here, because that's equal to zero, we know what we're gonna have is we're gonna have one solution, all right? So uh, this is what's going to definitely happen for this parabola. It's only gonna hit the x-axis one time. So that's all we're really practicing right now is going ahead and seeing how can we use the discriminant to identify what's happening, okay? So there's number 15. Uh, if you wanna go ahead and solve it, you can, but I'm telling you right now, there's gonna be just one solution, okay? Let's try another one. Uh, just get used to just finding the discriminant. Let's try this one where we have eight x squared. Then let's say we have plus eight x, and let's do plus three is equal to zero. Plus three is equal to zero. So let's jump right into seeing what kind of solutions we have. So A is equal to eight, B is also equal to eight, and C is equal to three. So uh, plugging this into the discriminant, which we know from earlier is this B squared minus four AC, substituting some values in, showing you this for consistency. Uh, this is going to be a positive eight squared minus four times eight times three. That's gonna be pretty big. Okay, so let's see here. Eight squared is gonna be 64. And then let's see, uh, eight times four is 32, 32 times three. It's gonna be minus 96 here, right? And so 64 minus 96 is gonna go negative. I think it's gonna be negative uh, 32 here. Okay, so again, let's not do the entire problem. We're just figuring out what this value is here. And because this value here is less than zero, what does that tell us? Tell us we're gonna have two complex solutions, right? Or two imaginary solutions, so two complex solutions. I'm just gonna go ahead and write that right down here. Okay, so that's what that tells us about our quadratic equation that we have here. Those are the types of solutions we will have, okay? Let's try another, okay? Not going through the entire problem, but just identifying these types of solutions. So. Uh, let's try a 17th example here where we're just using the discriminant and talking about a little bit how it works and it affects things. And so let's try uh, this equation where we have 5x squared plus 20x plus 20x plus 21 is equal to zero, okay? So there we have an equation here and let's see what's going to happen. Let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula and identify just the discriminant part of it. So we have five for A, B is gonna be 20, and C is gonna be 21. And so always we'll start with this part of the quadratic formula or discriminant because it tells you more. So transitioning that thinking a little bit here. So let's go ahead and substitute some values in here. So we're gonna have this 20 squared minus four times five times this 21 for C, okay? So going ahead and simplifying this a bit, let's see what we got here. 20 squared, that's 400, that's pretty big. Uh, minus four AC, so it's four times five is 20 times 21, it's gonna be minus 420. And you're gonna notice here that we're gonna get a negative value of negative 20, okay? So when we look at this, because this uh, discriminant value is less than zero, what does that tell us? It tells us that we're going to, again, have two complex solutions. I'm gonna steal that from here and say we have two complex solutions, okay? That is what we know by just doing the discriminant. Let's try another couple here maybe, give it a go and see if it makes more sense as we practice. 
If you want to do the rest of the entire problem now, go for it to find out if that's true or not true, uh, but it should work out just fine. Let's try this one where we have uh, 8x squared uh, minus 4x plus 2, and let's set that equal to 5x minus 11. So we don't really know our a, b, and c first. We're going to have to move everything to the same side. So let's take away 5x and add 11 on this side. And let's take away 5x and add 11 to the left side as well. Going ahead and doing that, what we see here is we'll have 8x squared minus 9x plus 13 is equal to 0. All right, so that's helpful because now we know our a, b, and c. So we're going to go ahead and write that and say, okay, a is equal to 8. We also know that b is equal to negative 9. And we know c is equal to positive 13. All right, so substituting these values right into the discriminant, I'm not going to write the b squared minus 4c or copy it rather. b squared is going to be negative 9 squared minus 4 times a, which is 8 times c, which is 13 here. Okay, so. There we have the substitution. And let's see what happens when we simplify this a bit. So negative nine squared is gonna be positive 81. And then we have this eight times four is 32. 32 times 13, I believe is 416. So we're gonna take away 416. And what happens when we do that? Well, I think that's going to be pretty negative, right? So we have 81 minus 416. 81 minus 416, negative. Ends in a five, I think negative 335, let's see. Negative 335. Think about that for a moment, see if that makes sense. I think it does. And because this value here, this value right here, that's called the discriminant is less than zero. Again, what we have here is uh, we have two complex solutions. That's what that tells us. All right, so there you have that example so we know what the discriminant is telling us is that this parabola or this quadratic equation is not going to hit the x-axis on the real number line, okay? All right, let's go ahead and try another one more of these types where we try just looking at the discriminant for 19th example here. Let's try solving this one where we have, hmm, let's do 7x squared, 7x squared minus 5, and let's set that equal to 2x and let's add 9x squared after that. Okay, so uh, if you want to try this on your own, go for it. Uh, think about what you need to do first. I think we're going to move everything to the same side uh, to keep everything to the left maybe. Let's take away 9x squared, take away 9x squared, and let's also take away 2x from the right and take away 2x from the left. So let's go ahead and try that out. If we do so, 7x squared minus 9x squared is going to be negative 2x squared. Then we have this uh, minus 2x, I kind of move to the left side, and then we have this minus 5, and that's equal to 0. At this point, let's go ahead and just multiply everything by negative 1 to flip all the negatives, and so we'll get 2x squared plus 2x, and then plus 5 is equal to 0. So that's a lot nicer since everything is now positive. Okay, so. There we go with that. And let's see, let's go ahead and find the discriminant here. So we know it's gonna be the square root of b squared minus four ac. So I'm gonna go ahead and substitute that in right away. Um, b squared is going to be two squared minus four times a, which is two times c, which is five. Extend that just a little bit. And two squared is going to be four. So we have four minus. Uh, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 5 is going to be 40, so it's going to be uh, minus 40 here. And if we go ahead and uh, continue simplifying that, we'll get negative 36. So you're going to see a lot of these have negative values here, and it's just to let us know what's going on, and that's going to be less than 0. So again, we have these two complex solutions again. <laughs> okay, so a little bit of a coincidence, a bunch of these in the row. But again, if it was positive, you'd have two uh, real solutions. If it was equal to zero, then you'd have one solution that's real. And if it's equal to a positive perfect square, then it was factorable or could have been factored instead. Okay, then you don't need the quadratic formula. And just for good measure, let's just do one final equation here. Um, this will be our final problem of this video, question 20. 
Let's try something that looks a little strange, maybe with some fractions and see how we do. So we have three X squared. Let's add nine halves X onto this, nine over two X and subtract four. And let's set this whole thing equal to five X plus three fourths. All right, something that looks a little complicated. Uh, maybe you're not too sure maybe where to start with it. If you wanna pause it and give it a try, uh, I encourage you to do so. Otherwise, I'm gonna jump right into it. So fractions can be a little bit annoying, but just a little trick and reminder is that you can take a uh, value multiplied by the entire equation by it. And if we choose a number that gets rid of all our denominators, that would be great. So looking at the denominators of two and four, I think four would be the least common denominator. So we multiply everything by four. Notice what's gonna happen here. So uh, 3x squared times four is gonna be 12x squared. And then nine halves times four, the two and four cross cancel, that will be plus 18x. And then this minus four times four is gonna be minus 16. And then five times four is gonna be 20x. And then three fourths of four, that's just gonna equal three. So just like that in one step, if you multiply by a specific number that clears the denominators, then you don't have to deal with fractions. So just wanted to kind of mention an example that dealt with that, okay? Uh, now let's make everything equal to zero. So let's take away 20x here. Let's take away 20x here. We can take away three from the right and take away three from the left. If we go ahead and do so, we're gonna be able to set this whole thing equal to zero. So we'll have 12x squared minus 2x, and then negative 16 minus 3 is negative 19, and I think this whole thing now is equal to 0. Okay, looking at this thing, and it's kind of hard to see if it'll be factorable or not, so I guess what we could do is we could start with the discriminant, right? The discriminant is going to be that b squared minus 4ac, so I'll go ahead and write that. That's going to be our b squared minus 4ac. Um, if this uh, shows us it's a perfect square, then we should just factor. If not, then we're already kind of on our way to using the quadratic formula. So let's go ahead and see here. I need a lot of space maybe. Uh, B squared, that's gonna be negative two squared uh, minus four times A, I think A is 12 here, and then C, which is gonna be negative 19. Let's see what we're gonna get here. So keeping this going, negative two squared is gonna be a positive four. We have two negatives, so that's gonna end up being a positive. So four times 12 is gonna be 48, and then 48 times 19, I think is gonna be plus 912, if I'm not mistaken, okay? And if we go ahead and add those two together, then we have uh, the square root of 916 which I don't think is a perfect square. So if it's not a perfect square, that means we should be able to you know, continue factoring this. So let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula here. So x equals the opposite of b, which is gonna be a positive two, plus or minus, we actually know what this is already, right? It's 916, that was a discriminant, and it's gonna be all over 2a. What's a? a is 12, yeah, 12. 12 times two is gonna be 24. All right, so again, 916 is not a perfect square, so we gotta kinda keep going. Let's see if we can break this thing down. So taking this 916 on the side, let's see what kind of factors we have. I think two times, I think that's gonna be 458. And then taking half of 458, I think that's gonna be 229, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense. So. We have a two here and a two here, that makes four, that's a perfect square. And then 229, I can't think of anything. I don't think it has any perfect square factors in it. So we should be able to take this 916 and break it into square root of four times the square root of 229, okay? If we do so, then we can say x is gonna be equal to two plus or minus the square root of four, which is two. So it's two root 229 all over 24. Just doing one more step here and seeing and dividing everything by the GCF of two, dividing everything by two, we get one plus or minus the square root of 229 all over 12. So in this case, uh, we have two solutions. They are both real, but they're irrational because 229 is not a perfect square. So there you have 20 different examples and detailed practice problems on solving quadratic equations. 
Hopefully you found it helpful to see when you could factor and when you couldn't factor, and how to maybe look at the discriminant, which is part of the quadratic formula, to determine some information about the solutions that you might not have known before, or that you maybe feel a little bit more comfortable with now that we've practiced a bunch together. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up, and as always, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.